So this video is going to be slightly different to the stuff I normally do. I'm actually not going to be doing a tutorial. I'm going to do a review of a new project that was, um, was, came out as a beta today, which is called Kano. So what is Kano? You might be thinking if you don't know already. Kano is a Raspberry Pi based project that was launched on Kickstarter um, last year. Um, the project was incredibly successful and managed to raise um, 1.5 million dollars um, and at the heart of the project is, is a Raspberry Pi. Now um, what it essentially is, is it's a package of two different types of things. One is a hardware package and it comes with a case, a little speaker, a keyboard and mouse of, of sorts um, and the other half of the project is a software operating system. Now the software operating system is probably the, the most kind of unique part of, of the package in itself. And the project was founded off the basis of the idea that the existing material to help learning of you know, ra the Raspberry Pi um, was essentially insufficient. We're fascinated by this, but we, we have no way to get in. The available resources, they're tough. There isn't a simple, fun way to get started. Um, and what they've done is they've tried to simplify um, the basically the, the Raspberry Pi. Now these things, the tablet market um, and things like um, you know Xboxes and Playstations are essentially ruining children's ability to learn about computing. And the whole point is that you know devices like this are a one-way street. They're very much you know materials is produced on marketplaces and it's pumped out through this and it's a vehicle to sell content to people. It is a computer, but you know, you can't learn about computing with this. You know, whereas a Raspberry Pi, you know, is the closest thing you'll get to a computer server that's used in massive organizations like Facebook and Google and that sort of thing. So, you know, the things you learn on this can be directly translated to a massive, you know, multi-million pound computer environment. So the question is, if Kano is trying to make this simpler and this is kind of like the worst thing for learning computing I guess the question is where does Kano fit somewhere along this sliding scale so what makes the Kano operating system slightly different to the standard Raspbian build that we're used to the first thing is when you boot you get this unusual um, boot message and it's this almost like a conversational based um, sort of instruction wizard it sort of ask you what is your name and you type in your name and it that creates your user account in Linux um, and then it asks you to type start x um, and then it boots into the standard sort of desktop based operating system and then what they've done with the desktop side of things is to sort of wipe away all of the existing um, information that's there and you get given these big blocks of things to do, which is like play Minecraft, you know, make music, play a video. Um, it's, the whole basic process has been simplified. There are there is the ability, like if you want to program a Minecraft, you can use like um, something similar to Scratch, which is like you know graphical programming, or you can click a button that turns code on, so you can actually see the code that's kind of behind it. You still can get to the terminal session and can run it like a full machine, like a full Linux machine, but they have obscured some of the Linux-based side of things. Personally, I feel that the work they've done has got some merit. I think that it's probably suitable for the younger age children, um, and it's actually quite a slick and quite a streamlined um, operating system. However, do I feel it's worth 1.5 million pounds of you know community investment? Not really. I think I personally would have rather have seen them put their hard efforts into an open source platform and just given it to the community, just given to it to the foundation for free. You know, um, any of you who are familiar with the Noobs boot system, they could have had something along the lines of, you know, the Noobs could ask you what your age is, and depending on what your age is, it would present you with a different operating system. Um, I also take a little bit of offence to the fact that they call it the Kano computer. You know. But having a keyboard, a mouse, you know, a standardized case does not make their product, you know, the Kano computer, it is a Raspberry Pi with a plastic case. Um, also, 
their hardware, which is actually, I believe, is their own intellectual property, is, um, is, is the keyboard and mouse, and they think they developed it themselves. I don't think it's going to work necessarily well for a long-term keyboard. It's a bit small, it looks cramped. I've not actually physically seen one yet because they're not in the wild yet, but I don't think they're going to replace, you know, a standard big keyboard that's, you know, good, it's ergonomic, it's comfortable. Again, I take offence to things like things like the Sonic Pi project is being called Music. It does say powered by Sonic Pi, but it does feel like they've reworked a lot of somebody else's work. It does feel like they've taken most of other people's work and try to kind of sell it off as their own and that's why I think I'd love to start a debate so please put your comments in the comments field and let's just you know have a chat about this see what people think of it this is the first uh, review I've done of anything of this type of nature maybe you think shut up Matt just teach us tutorials we're not interested in your opinion maybe you like my take on a few things um, again put that in the comment field I'm more than happy to listen I hope this has been of some interest to some people and um, thanks for watching